hey thanks for tuning in in this video we are going to be creating a realistic screen effect inside of twinch resolve here we have our footage since this uh, fusion composition is only five seconds long uh, you're not able to see what i'm typing over here let's go to the very first frame and change this trim slider till we see our first character over here that we're typing so it starts about on this frame but if you go to the last frame you cannot see the entire sentence so we have to speed up the clip so i will uh, add in a time speed to this and change the speed till i see the entire let's take a look at this time speed node I'm going to increase the speed slider till I see the entire text, like so. Um, so yeah, that is, um, our, our clip is now ready. If you have a static screenshot, then you don't have to do this process. But anyways, we will create our grid background now. We will add in a background tool and add in a scan lines tool to this. And if you take a look at the scan lines, it won't show up anything and that is because our composite is set to overlay we will switch it to add and change the width let's increase that and increase the sharpness and line frequency set this to 18. now i'm not sure how it's going to look zoomed out but if you zoom in you can get the correct idea of how it is going to look and i'm going to copy and paste this as an entrance Control shift v and d instance the line angle so right click d instance and we set this to 90. let's take a look at the second instance you can see that we have this grid pattern and let's go to the background and set the alpha to zero now we can merge these together Result in merge one take a look at it and we can see the entire thing over here now i'll just set the apply mode to screen and reduce the blend and also if you think the pixels are too big you can reduce the size like that and then you can cover the edges over here set this to wrap to corrupt the edges We'll add another overlay or texture to this, which is going to be our fingerprint texture. I got this from Ambient CG. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to use the same texture. But here it is. I'm going to add this to the scene over here. Take a look at it. First of all, set the edges to wrap and change the apply mode to screen. Now if it is too intense, you can control that with the blend over here. So we have really subtle fingerprints on our screen. Then we will add in our image. This is the image I got from Pixels. But what we are interested in is this screen reflection. Of course, you can take your own image set in front of a tv or in front of your computer monitor set the background to black and then click a picture import it inside of fusion but i was too lazy to do all that stuff so i'm going to use this image over here and just mask out this black or the reflection in this screen so using the polygon tool i can just zoom in and just simply mask it out like so now let's enable the polygon one this is what we have let's merge this up like so take a look at this merge three this is what we will have and now we want to scale it up so i'll just after the media in three add in a scale or you can add in a transform and also let's just rename this this is our fingerprint texture and this is our reflection texture Let's go to transform over here and increase the size and change its position like so let's go to the most three and set the apply mode to screen feel free to play around with different blend modes over here or the apply modes over here 
think screen words works absolutely fine and if you want to you know kind of have more intense reflection or want to have more or less of it then you can add in a bad brightness and contrast to this and play around with the lows and the highs over here and maybe you want to play around with these options of clipping this will get some interesting results into your scene and after the merge three what we'll do is add in sharpen to this to sharpen up everything we have over here let's take a look at it this is what it does i think this is too intense so we'll just set this to right 0.5 and now we will add in a prism blur to this take a look at it uh, it will just add this chromatic aberration to your scene just increase the strength and set the blur strength to zero and reduce the aberration distance as well 0 0.01 then you can add in a very blur to this we're adding very blur so that we can get nice a blur at the at the corners or at the edges uh, if you're using davinci resolve studio i think there is lens blur option as well lens blur tool you can use that since i'm on the free version i just use very blur um, do note that this is quite a resource hungry effect so uh, yeah just keep that in mind i'll just increase the blur size you can see what it does kind of weird blur i know but it's really powerful i'll just add in a background to this this is going to be a gradient or a blur map for this very blur connect that like so now you'll see that the blur will disappear and the reason for that is because the color is set to black if i set this to white you can see the blur happening and the blur is nice now but we want to change that we will change the type to gradient and gradient type to radial and you can move these points around you can go to the very blur and increase the blur size thing the max is 10. Uh, we don't want that uh, cr crazy amount of blur but i'm just going to show you what we are doing we're just gonna focus on the part that you want to highlight which is this over here and then i can move the second point away something like that and you know we can move it around so that we have a nice gradient fall off over here you can add another point to this another um, black gradient stop and you can you know sort of move it away like so so that we have more control over this great and then you can use the offset slider over here to animate depth of field and you know if you're creating it in a 3d environment you might want to have that rack focus look you can use offset over here the slider to animate that um, but since we're not doing this in 3d this is all in 2d then i don't think we have to use this so at the very blur we can add in a camera shake this is personal preference uh, but i kind of want to mimic the laptop screen when you are typing you can see that you might have noticed that there is the screen shakes a little bit so this is uh, that's what i'm going for i'm going to increase the speed and reduce the strength and what i like to do is uh, i like to link all these three properties so i right click on expression right click on expression so I'm going to link X to Y, Y to the rotation. Now I can use this single slider to control all three. And just reduce that. And if you play this, you can see that we have this uh, shake going on, but this is too intense. So let's just reduce the overall strength. Yeah, I think 0 0.011 looks fine. So yeah, this is that little uh, shake ha that happens on the screen when you type on your laptop but anyways after the camera shake we will add in our last but not least which is lens distort take a look at it and it won't really do much until you change the distortion so just set this to negative 0.100 and then let's scale things up so after add in a transform Take a look at it and just kill everything up like so and there you have it that's your that's pretty much it 
So after the transform, you can add in a media out. And since it's kind of hard to look what we have done over here, we don't have the full screen preview inside of Fusion. What I like to do is to see the changes, I like to go to the edit page and control F to go full screen and you can see that how it looks. And I can check the corners. We have the blur and all that stuff. We have the chromatic aberration. Everything is working fine. We have the reflections and the fingerprints as well. So I think everything is looking good. And that is all we have for this video. I hope this video is helpful. Hope it will help you on your upcoming projects. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.